Alright, so getting ready to start pulling this uh, plane apart for uh, the annual inspection. And uh, while I was out here, I was thinking about maybe shooting a quick video talking about uh, uh, which UI framework you should use if you're going to be building an iOS application. So for the longest time, since the beginning of the iOS platform, the original uh, uh, platform that you would use, or that's the framework you would use, was the, uh, the UI kit framework. And similarly on the Mac, they had the app kit as well. Well, last year Apple introduced uh, Swift UI, which is a new framework that's really built on top of uh, some recent changes they made to the Swift programming language. And so I've been talking to some people and they're talking about, well, which framework do I use? Should I use UI kit or should I use uh, Swift UI? And I think that really depends. So if you're just trying to learn, if you're trying to learn one versus the other, uh, I would take a good hard look at uh, Swift UI because that's definitely the direction that Apple has chosen for the future. And it's a framework that's not just available on iOS, it's also something you can use in watchOS and macOS. Uh, so it's very easy to take those skills that you've developed for learning how to do uh, Swift UI development and apply them to Apple's different platforms. And the other thing that's also nice about Swift UI is it's really kind of a reactive type framework. So if you've used frameworks like React.js, as an example, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of transition uh, into that framework if you're coming from a completely different platform. Uh, I would say uh, it's still important to know UI Kit. Uh, my current job, we use UI Kit every day. It's still the primary way that we do our UI development. Uh, but one of the problems that you run into with um, uh, using UI Kit is that, you know, uh, a lot of times people are kind of tied to using storyboards and nib files with uh, UI Kit. And one of the things I found from uh, doing development with Teams is it's a lot easier just to do all of your user interface design just in code as opposed to using one of the tools that Apple's provided for kind of like laying out the, uh, the, the frameworks. And that's actually one of the things that's nice about Swift UI is that you're kind of designing with code. And the thing that's really nice about that is if you're working with teams, uh, one of the problems you run into is if you have multiple people that have checked out the same storyboard file, you can run to have, you can start having merge conflicts when people are both checking in changes to the same file. And you're not gonna have that with Swift UI. So I'd say probably where you want to use UI Kit over Swift UI is really going to be backwards compatibility. So if you're trying to deliver apps that will run on versions of iOS prior to iOS 13, you're going to have to use UI Kit. And, uh, and on top of it, if you're using a framework, like a, a pre-existing framework that leverages parts of uh, the user interface, they may have ties in the UI kit. So I think it's still important to know and understand UI kit because chances are, if you're getting a job at a company where they already have an existing code base, you're probably gonna need to know UI kit. And so I would say, uh, if you're trying to start from scratch, I definitely would learn Swift UI first because uh, Swift UI is, uh, is the future. And most likely what I'm gonna be doing here in the next, uh, next couple of weeks is I'm gonna be doing a series of videos showing, you know, basically uh, I'm gonna build an app and I'm gonna build a, a simple app uh, and show how to do this the app in UI kit versus how to do it in Swift UI. And so that way you can get the kind of perspective and say, like, okay, well, this is how I accomplish this task using Swift UI. This is how I can accomplish it using UI kit. And so that'll be forthcoming. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to tearing this thing apart. And if you like this video, please uh, give a thumbs up. If you don't, you know, give it a thumbs down or leave a comment in the comment section. And please subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you later, bye.